Hey guys, this is Grant Coombs III, aka Ball Bomb, coming to you for another video from cardrunners.com. In this video, as you can see, we're going to delve into a live session where I'm playing 50NL on Lock Poker. And it's a Friday night, so hopefully the games are going to be a little bit more wild. Should be a more interesting game, hopefully, for you guys to, to be watching. Also, it is sort of interesting because you're going to have an interesting dynamic of probably really good regulars and much more recreational players all sort of mixed into one. Because the really good players are obviously going to be, you know, giving up a lot of their Friday and Saturday nights to hopefully play with some more recreational players. So what you get is some really interesting games where actually the variance goes quite high in both directions, whether it can be a really good day or a really bad day. So it is important that you recognize the implications of this. You, are, you recognize that a lot of times that the variance is going to be higher and that one, you're able to control your emotional your your emotional tilt control much better than hopefully your opponents will be doing. The other thing to look out for is also that I'm just gonna be checking here. Um, the other thing to look out for is also that you have to understand the that the other players are gonna be facing a lot of the same emotions that you are. So a lot of times they are gonna be actually more prone to go on tilt than they would be otherwise. So definitely need to be worrying about about these things. I'm just gonna fold here. I think that it it um, this board definitely hits a tight calling range quite a bit there with queen jack suited king queen king jack those sort of fans ace queen as always it's gonna be table one table two table three and table four here um there's not gonna i'm not gonna rely a ton on the stats when an important stats comes up i definitely will be sure to alert you guys but obviously i think really the most important stats are just gonna be right here which is gonna be on the left it's gonna be VP, vpip and preflop raise beyond that i'll definitely alert you to the stats that are going to trigger some of the plays that I make, but I'm not, I'm not going to try to make it too stat oriented because I know it's pretty difficult to follow each instructor's HUD because they're all different and we all have different ways that we like organizing our, our HUD. So it's sort of tough for the viewer to just pick up on it on an individual basis. I think this is a spot where I definitely can, uh, can isolate here. I expect him to be folding too a lot of either one or double barrels here pretty dry board definitely gonna be double barreling in this situation he called really quickly i think the king's gonna be a really key card for me to get him to fold a lot of a lot of floats here on the flop don't expect him to fold 10x obviously but i think i can get him to fold you know two four ace high things like that Let's see. And I thought I could probably... I'm going to check here with Ace-King, and I'm just going to check call. Um, I thought that I could get him to make a, a pretty loose call there with a lot of hands based on bet sizing, but don't mind just taking it down there, too. He might have actually played that ideally with calling on the flop a turn when he was ahead and then folding river. Um, he ends up shoving here. And I, my original plan was to check call here. I think actually what a shove does, though, is that I think he has a lot of 8Xs. And I, ne I almost never anticipate him having queen X, but I think that he probably has one pair there, a decent amount. So I th I'm fine with just folding. He ends up re-raising, obviously just getting out of the way here. That's typically a fold that I would make against a lot of players here, but because the recreational player was involved with the hand, I was happy just to call with fours to attempt to spike my hand. Obviously, Ace-King's just going to get in, sort of regardless of how they play it. It's going to find a way to get in. And that's something that I'm definitely, particularly on a Friday and Saturday night, I'm really going to be focused on more than just about anything else is where are the more recreational players at the table? How can I find ways to get play pots with them? And how can I discourage my opponents from not playing as many pots as they want to with them? Definitely going to be really key, key things to think about on a Friday night where you probably are going to have more recreational players than an average night. 